Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing a review video of the Huawei P9 Android smartphone. Now, if you haven't already, check out my previous video on unboxing the Huawei P9 to see my first impressions of the device. Although in the unboxing video, I said I was going to take about a week to get my bearings with this phone and see what I like and don't like about it, I actually have spent about three weeks using it. And what I have to say is this is an amazing smartphone. For the value, I would say it's far better in value than almost any other phone I've seen or used. And uh, there's all different features that I really like about it. So let me get started and show you some of those. The first sort of superficial thing that I really like about this phone is the aesthetics and style of it. It has an excellent thin, uh, thin form factor, a very large display with relatively thin borders around the edges, and I do very much like the anodized aluminum case or material. Now, in the first video, in the unboxing video, I said that I was going to use the case that it came with, but I actually decided not to. So it is a bit of a risk to use this without a case because obviously if it lands on hard concrete on the corner, it is most likely going to break the screen. But I've been very careful and in the three weeks I've had it so far, I have not yet dropped it. Now besides that, I also really like just the general style of it. I like the little uh, plastic detailing going around the edge of the aluminum. I like this, uh, this kind of polished plastic surface for the camera, uh, for the both cameras and uh, the symmetric line going around the bottom. Uh, it really makes it look modern. It makes it look really stylish. And to be honest, this is what I would envision the next iPhone to look like. It really has that high design and that really elegant style. And I really like that unlike a lot of the other Android phones, it doesn't have the curved over display. I know a lot of people really like that, but to me, it sort of gives the phone a less robust feel to have that curved over display and having this direct edge and this really noticeable uh, prominent edge not only makes it feel more robust in the hand, but also gives you a better grip on it so it doesn't feel like you're constantly about to drop it. So aesthetics, definitely a go on this. The next thing I really like about this phone is the display. The first thing I'll start off by mentioning is at full brightness, this comes in as probably one of the brightest displays I've ever seen. I have it side by side with an iPhone 5S also at full brightness, and although it's a little bit hard to tell on the camera, looking straight on at the display, this one is most definitely noticeably brighter. And that's pretty amazing because I thought the iPhone backlights were pretty good. Even the, the iPhone backlights are even brighter than my laptop's backlight at full brightness. So really the, the backlight on this is almost too bright. I find that if I'm in a darker space, I find myself turning it down quite often. Now you can enable adaptive brightness. I generally like to manually control brightness on devices, but it's great because it provides both of those options. Now the next thing also about the display is the quality is very good. Although it is an LED or an LCD display, not an OLED display, it still boasts excellent uh, quality and performance. For example, if I go to a previously taken photograph, you can see the detail, if I move this close to the camera, it's probably hard to tell because the camera I'm using is not particularly high fidelity, but the detail on this display is really, really nice. I mean, this is like, I, I can't even tell the difference between this and the uh, and any other display I've used. It's almost as good as the 4K display on my Dell XPS 13. Now, the next thing I'll also show you about the display is just the general response time. It's, I believe this is a 60 frames per second or 60 hertz refresh rate display, but it really is smooth uh, to track through different apps and to, uh, to display video. And really there's no problem at all with refresh rate uh, on this display either. As for the system performance and processing power, I've found very little that this phone can't do that other more expensive phones can. For example, uh, although many people have said the Emotion UI is somewhat uh, high in overhead, I've had no problem with opening up menus and getting it to work very, very quickly and effectively. I mean, really, this has been an excellent, uh, it's, it's got plenty of processing power to run the UI, and I haven't had any real issues loading up different menus on it or with response time. Now, for highly graphics-intensive games and other programs like Asphalt 8, 
The performance is relatively good and certainly excellent for the price. I do notice a small amount of frame rate decrease for these highly intensive games, but really it's nothing that makes it intolerable to play, and it certainly doesn't adversely affect my, uh, my performance on it, although I'm not particularly good at these games to begin with. But uh, I can definitely say with certainty that the performance with, uh, of, the G of the GPU and CPU is certainly more than adequate for most applications. Now perhaps the biggest appeal that this phone carried for me, which is not inherently exclusive to the Huawei P9, it also applies to pretty much all other Android phones, was the ability to upgrade storage. Now as you can see here in the SIM card slot, not only is there space for the original SIM card, but there is also space for up to 128 gigabyte SD card. This is excellent because especially for video production and uh, the sorts of things where you have to store lots of memory, this gives the phone far more versatility. Additionally, it has a 32 gigabyte internal memory, which means you have plenty of room for apps and other core components that you might not want to store on the SD card in case you need better uh, speed and response time. Having upgraded from a 16 gigabyte iPhone 6S, I'm finding huge amounts of improved luxury in being able to store a lot more data, a lot longer videos, and just generally a lot more information on this device than I ever could on my previous device. Another awesome feature of the Huawei P9 is that the USB Type-C output can also be used as a USB power supply. By swiping down and going to, the, uh, to this USB settings, you can actually select reverse charging. Now reverse charging gives you the option to then supply five volts at up to 500 milliamps from a USB type A connector, which could then be used to charge another device like this other iPhone here. So what this does is it ultimately makes this not only a, uh, able to read other like flash drives and external devices like that, but it can also be used as a sort of makeshift power bank in an emergency. So that really is an excellent added benefit of this USB Type-C port. While we're on the topic of power banks, I'd like to also uh, include a bit of information about battery life of this device. Now, one of the few small complaints I have about this is it is quite power hungry. Even in standby or in lock, when the screen is completely off, it will consume roughly 1% battery life an hour. And that can be quite substantial over the course of a couple of days. It will run itself all the way flat within three to four days, even if not used at all. This means if you're taking it on like a camping trip or something, you're definitely either going to want to shut it down when you're not using it or bring a good, a good sized power bank along. It's certainly not a big problem if, you're, if you take it home to charge every day and uh, have power available, but that is something to keep in mind if you're going to be using it off the grid for a while. Now, one of the things I noticed is during operation, when the screen is at full brightness, it is extremely power hungry. It will chew this 3200 milliamp hour battery up quite fast. Uh, but that being said, if you turn the brightness down, the battery life improves enormously. Let me go to a battery ma uh, monitoring app here and let me show you what I mean. So right now with the screen at full brightness, it's discharging at around 395 to 400 milliamps, which is a, fa is a fairly substantial number. And this will go up even more substantially if I'm playing a video, perhaps almost up to an amp of discharge rate with a video playing. If I turn my screen brightness all the way down, however, and I go back to the app, now I'm using only about 100 milliamps continuously, and that's with the screen on. So that means I've reduced my power consumption by 75% by turning the brightness of the screen all the way down. So this definitely does not reflect badly on the actual phone's battery management or battery life because it, uh, it does give you the option to be quite conservative on your power usage. However, if you do want to run it at full brightness, be aware that it is going to discharge fairly quickly. In fact, you can even see on the camera, it looks like the exposure is locked because the screen is so incredibly bright. So to where it basically washes out if you focus on anything else. So uh, if I do, in my previous testing, I have run this at full brightness throughout the day. And I find that I use roughly one full cycle of, uh, of battery life per day. So I use probably around 3000 to 3200 milliamp hours of battery capacity per day, which is not really a problem considering the original charger can recharge this thing in less than two hours. One of the interesting things I did find out, however, is if I try to charge the device using a non-Huawei branded charger, even one that's rated to supply 2.1 amps, 
it will only charge it up to one amp total. So if I go over to the charging setting, you'll see uh, that the current charging current is about 515 milliamps. You of course have to subtract the roughly 400 or add on the roughly 400 milliamps that the uh, actual screen and other uh, and processor are using, but it will not go above about an amp if you're using a non Huawei supplied charger. So if you are using like a power bank or a non Huawei rated charger, be prepared for it to take a little bit longer, maybe three to four hours to reach a full charge. Certainly not a problem at all if you just leave it on overnight, but if you want to charge really quickly in midday, it might not be such a bad idea to keep the Huawei charger on hand. Now one of the biggest attractions to this phone is the dual Leica camera. Now unlike a lot of uh, dual cameras that produce stereoscopic images, these actually work in a way similar to the cone and rod cells in your eyes. One of the cameras is a high resolution color camera, and the other is a high resolution black and white camera. The black and white camera is optimized for low light conditions and to provide excellent detail on objects, whereas the color camera is designed to provide the color depth, of course, to the photographs or videos that you're taking. By consolidating the images from the two in software, you can produce an excellent quality image with both high color, uh, color depth and also high resolution and high contrast in both low light and high light conditions. Now, before I show you some actual footage from the camera, I also want to show you the flashlight on this. It is incredibly bright, much brighter than the iPhone flashlight, and honestly, probably bright enough to be used as like an actual on the, on the work site, like go out in the woods kind of flashlight. By no means is this the little tiny phone flashlight that stereotypically has such low performance. This thing is crazy bright. If I actually put my finger over it, after a few seconds, it actually starts to burn slightly because it's so incredibly bright. So going beyond the cameras, the actual flashlight feature is really awesome. Here's some footage from my vacation in San Diego. I'm crossing the Coronado Bridge, and as you can see, in high light level conditions, the picture is quite good. The resolution is maybe a little bit low. Uh, if you turn your YouTube settings all the way up to 1080p, you'll see a little bit of uh, a sharp outline around some of the objects, particularly the boats, and maybe a little bit of uh, loss of resolution. But overall, not really anything too noticeable or serious about this. It's quite a good picture for, such a, uh, for the price of camera. For outdoor photography, the low light performance is very excellent. As you can see here, only a small amount of grain is noticeable, and the image is clear and not overly blurry either. This is indicative that the sensor is very sensitive and performs well even at high ISO settings. In high light levels, close-ups of objects on video are also very good with this camera. As you can see, a huge amount of detail in the flowers and leaves, and I do quite like that depth of field effect that you get in that sort of close-up view. One limitation I have noticed with this camera is that in low light conditions, the detail tends to decrease quite substantially. In addition, I've noticed that a lot of times the saturation and contrast get a little bit off. As you can see here, the darker colors in this video uh, tend to be a bit too dark, and some of the colors are like a little bit weirdly oversaturated maybe. The reds come through a little too hot, and you almost see a slight outline on some of the more contrasting objects. Of course, for the price of this whole system, this is not bad performance at all, but it is something to note if you're going to be doing a lot of indoor photography or video. One of the coolest things too that this has available is an actual manual adjustment system. So if you're a photographer and you have experience adjusting ISO and shutter speed and all the other uh, cool features that you can adjust with this, there is a professional, uh, pro professional mode setting on the camera. And this is really great because the shutter speed can actually be increased up to like over a second, up to 30 seconds. And this means you can actually do long exposures with this camera, which is really cool considering the, uh, all the applications that you can do with that. Now I know that other apps on, on other uh, smartphone platforms do allow this, but it's really nice to have that type of a feature built into the actual onboard software on the phone. Now that you've seen some uh, sample footage with, in different light levels and different conditions from the camera, the last thing I'd like to show you is the actual fingerprint recognition device on this phone. Now I've actually found that this is an incredibly fast uh, fingerprint recognizer. 
If I put my finger on this, I'm gonna count down, three, two, one, click, and it just popped on. Let's try that again, three, two, one, click. Look how fast that is. So this thing has an incredibly responsive fingerprint reader, and it really does work quite nicely. It's almost faster than the iPhone 6S's fingerprint reader, which is quite impressive. Now, originally having been uh, a previous iPhone user, I did find it a little bit awkward to not have the thumbprint reader and have to use it on the back, but very quickly I got used to it and I found that it is really an effective way to get in and out of the phone uh, without too much trouble. So let's get down to brass tacks then. Do I recommend this phone? Is it a good value? Well, based on all of the tests I've done by using it for the last three weeks, and really getting to know it and getting, uh, getting everything configured the way I'd like it, I would say yes, this is a phenomenal value in this phone. I was really quite surprised. I was a little bit concerned because it was, made, uh, it was a Chinese brand made in China, manufactured and designed in China, that maybe it would come up as being a little bit inferior to a lot of the higher end Galaxy, Sam, uh, Samsung, and of course Apple and the iPhone phones. But honestly, this thing has surpassed all my expectations and really it's come right up to play with those other high-end phones uh, and really it's it's done the business granted there are a few things that i think could use a little bit of improvement maybe the maybe the camera could uh, use a little bit higher resolution and higher performance camera but other than that the thing is really great it's fast it does all the work i need and it really is stylish and sleek like I said at the beginning, this is what I envisioned the iPhone 8 to look like in the future. And uh, it really is a great, uh, a great stylistic phone. The display is phenomenal. Refresh rate, uh, LCD quality, brightness is incredible. Great flashlight, fast processor, and fully expandable memory with 32 gigabytes on board. So I would say this, the Huawei P9, it, I would call this an eight or $900 phone if I had to guess what the cost would be. It's a $380 phone, and that's unlocked from the factory, not from a carrier. So I am adamantly happy with how well this turned out. I mean, if, if you're looking for a phone, not even necessarily a quote-unquote budget phone, if you're looking for a fantastic smartphone, pretty well top tier, go for this one. So I say... Uh, I, I, ha I don't have any other Huawei phones uh, to test, but I really am a fan of the Huawei brand, and I've become quite, uh, quite loyal to the Huawei brand, even more so than my original loyalty uh, to the Apple phones. So I'm really quite happy with the performance of this, and I say for the price on Amazon that you can get this for, go for it. Now, the only thing I do want to note is this is the warranty-free international version, so if you break this or if it's dead on arrival from the factory, you're pretty much out of luck. You may be able to get Amazon to refund you if it is a dead on arrival situation, but there's not going to be any sort of drop or spill protection. And if there is any problem with like the battery down the road, it'll be up to you to replace it on your own. So that's just my little disclaimer at the end of the video. There is a reason that you're paying a little bit less for this, but quality wise and performance wise, you're not gonna suffer at all with this device. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this review video, and if you're looking to buy a new smartphone, hopefully you consider Huawei as a brand that uh, you might be interested in buying. Thank you for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.